Jones seen a Percocet Why he tryna act all tough and shit like he a threat? Smoking on a pack, you know this not no cigarette How you fall in love already, you know I swear that we just met Can't nobody fuck with me, you know they fuck with MBB My diamonds wetter than a sin trap, I came with magazine Your trap, I finna fucking blow My diamonds colder than the snow Don't give a fuck about what you want I really did this on my own Hit it, then I passed the bro I really got the game on hold They gave me 20 for the show Yo, MBB Glock, welcome to the Tom Bomb Podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Uh, first thing I want to ask you, if you could just let everybody know where you're from and how it was growing up in your area. Yeah, so I was born in uh, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, right now I live in uh, West Covina, California. Um, growing up in Egypt, it, it was like a small community. Uh, you kind of know everyone around you, but see, I lived in like like far away from the city from the main Cairo and yeah I just knew like my whole neighborhood knew me and I knew them and when I moved away from Egypt like they all knew oh he left you know can you hear me bro yeah 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 oh you were lagging out you're good um yeah no that's dope so how old were you when you came to the U.S. Uh, so I was nine years old Uh, I moved in 2015 Okay, perfect. Um, so how was it growing up there, like music wise, like music wise? Oh, yeah, you hear a lot of um Arabic trap, like Arabic trap music. I I like to imagine it like think of like future, but Arabic and all of the trap artists kind of sound like that, and they all keep the same cadence. And so I definitely picked up some influence from that in my. You could hear that in my music today too. Yeah, that's dope. Um. So for the Arabic trap, right? I'm just curious, and I'm sure people watching this, especially in the U.S., would be curious. Um, do they have like big artists like we have here? Like yeah, yeah. Um, I w- uh the one big artist is uh, Muhammad Ramadan. The uh, a lot of people say he's like the Drake of Egypt, sorta. He's like he he pulls crazy numbers considering he's an international artist. Um, that's really it though. He it's uh I think of it as like a monopoly. He's kind of taken over the whole game right now. He's not even leaving space for a lot of artists. But yeah, he he's dope though. He's cool. Yeah, that's crazy how someone could be so big like somewhere and then like somewhere else somebody has no idea where they are. Isn't that wild? Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Yeah, so that this you're probably the first person that I've interviewed like not besides like from the US, Canada. So I'm curious, like when you come over, right? Um, when does the idea pop in your head to, to start making hip hop music? Right. So, um, for context, my mom used to be a musician back in Egypt. Uh, she made like, like Christian, like, like gospel music sort of. So, uh, that definitely, um, like got the idea of music in my head and you gotta like, uh, realize that I came to America during that, like that SoundCloud era sound. 2016 to like 2018 so i was listening to a lot of that and i picked up a lot of my english from that like i'm even like i'm self-taught in english so um like i taught myself using like that that music so that obviously pushed me towards writing and like making music like especially hip-hop yeah yeah talk about um so you were nine you were still pretty young but talk about just the culture shock from going to egypt to california yeah so um People, so in Egypt, people are a lot more, um, like, it's a small thing, but people are a lot more polite in Egypt, in Egypt. Um, Here, it's like, everyone kind of goes on with their life without getting themselves involved in other people's lives. But in Egypt, it's not like that. Everyone's involved, everyone. Like, I like to compare it to um, if if somebody broke their leg in Egypt, uh, like, you'd have, like, half the neighborhood helping them up and, like, taking them to the hospital or whatever. Here, if uh, you just call the ambulance and then they get charged, like, $5,000 and, yeah. Yeah, or people would walk past you. <laughs> yeah, people walk past you or, like, record. Yeah, so I'm curious to know. So uh, who would you say your influences are for making your music? So um, I'm not going to be, like, other artists because I- I'm pretty young myself. Uh, a lot of artists will say, like, oh, like, some, some of, like, the old hip-hop. But to be honest, um, some of my biggest influences would have to be people like Uzi, Cardi, really the whole opium scene, um, Autumn, Osama-san, uh, and also if like a little bit back, like Speaker Knockers, people definitely sleep on Speaker Knockers, but he definitely started that legend, wave. Like, yeah, legend, yeah, legend before his time. Yeah, he died too way too young, and it wasn't even like from like, 
wasn't even from like a gunshot wound or anything. He had a heart attack and yeah, just unfortunate um yeah. situation. Yeah, the whole opium uh movement, Cardi, you know, destroy lonely Ken Carson. They're, they're really like influencing a whole generation that's younger than me, like people in their yeah. uh, you know late teens and twenties. That's kind of their new wave. And when I was coming up, it was more like you know Little Wayne's Hot Run, and then yeah. Peter into Uzi. But now it's past that now. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um. So. Obviously, you're an independent artist. Um, talk about um just some of, you know your your struggles when you started out making music. Like what, and talk about the confidence um that you had to have. You know, coming over from a different country, learning the language, obviously, and then yeah. having the confidence to drop you know American hip hop music online. Because once you drop that online, anyone you've ever known can look at it. They can say whatever they want about it. So talk about that. Yeah. So uh, I'll start off with like the struggles of being an independent artist. Uh, people don't realize. So I started making music around 2019, 2020. And that's when you didn't really have band lab and those accessible, like, you know, so you had to really like adapt and learn with uh, like tools that are harder to use, like, um, like pro uh, like logic pro X uh, FL studio. And, you know, it's hard to do that when you're teaching yourself and you don't have a label to back you and to pay for your studio sessions and to distribute all your music. But now, obviously, it's a lot easier as an independent artist now that you have things like BandLab and like DistroKid. Um, I do think it's still pretty hard, though, but it's easier, definitely. And see, uh, I got the confidence to drop music. So I, I never really cared what people like what my social like social media image was. So I could I sort of just started dropping music as a joke. And then when I started taking it serious, I was thinking of doing Arabic music. But then I realized that the market for American hip hop music specifically is so big, so much bigger. It would not make any sense for me to drop like Arabic hip hop music, especially now that I live in California. So, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, that's what that's what I was going to ask you next. <clears throat> if you ever um, had that thought to do the Arabic hip hop. Yeah, I for sure did, because I speak I speak fluent Arabic. And so do my parents and so does my whole family. You know, most of my family lives back in Egypt. So it's not like I can't get into that market, but it's just like the market here is so much bigger. There's so much more money to be made. So many shows to be performing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. Um, Was there a transition? Like when you first started doing this, like um, did your family have a problem with you moving into American hip hop music or was it, they just let you do whatever? No, no, my family has always supported me. Uh, I, you know, thankfully I have good parents, good siblings. So my mom, since she was in the music industry, she pushed me towards making music, even though she was kind of fucked over by like, by the music industry over back in Egypt. Yeah. But um, like she pushed me towards making music. And my dad never had a problem with me. He always supported me. You know, if I ever needed anything, I could borrow money from him, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. So I discovered you through your song, uh, 150K. And then I, I, you know, I started going through your discography. You've been, uh, uploading to socials since at least 2001. Um, you have four singles out this year already, 2023. Um, talk about your work ethic so far. You already have four singles out. Um, what's the goal for, you know, we're coming up on 2024. What's your goal for like the fourth quarter of this year? So 2023, I've been taking it easy in terms of dropping music, but it's not like I'm working, I'm not working behind the scenes. I have over like 300 unreleased songs in the vault. So yeah, I'm making music. I'm just adapting on my sound before I release. And, you know, the goal's always been to uh, find the sound for me, at least until recently. And I think with this, I'm dropping an album on October 31st. The, this solidifies my sound. This is what my music is going to sound from further on, at least in, at least 2024. Um, if you listen back to some of my old discography, um, my recent song, Backup, sounds so much different than anything I've ever released before. Yeah, I was like, going to say that. I think that's your best song so far. Yeah. So I think I really found my sound. That song was supposed to be on the album, but I released it early to sort of give everyone like a sneak peek of what the album is going to sound like. Yeah. Um. That's what I was going to ask you too, right? Yeah. Um, Because that's a, what a lot of fans look for, right? You have singles, they're looking... I know you have one EP out, um, but then everyone's like, oh, when's that album coming? Right. So um, 
talk about your process going into an album like do you, have you released the name of it yet yeah uh, it's live to die live to die okay. yeah so what's your process going into the album right um are you more of like a you want the fan to listen from track one to track 10 in order or are you kind of like just put in your hottest shit on there like a playlist like uh right. what's your strategy and how'd you come up with the name so um my whole thing with the album is it's sort of a mix so as i said i have a lot of unreleased music so i sat down with like some of my friends that also make music and we listened to some of those unreleased songs and we decided those seven songs are going to be the best on the album and this album is like really short it's 12 minutes long and the whole point behind that oh, album wow. okay yeah the whole point behind that album is short music gets a lot of replay value right i, I know that, especially now yeah. yeah i know my value i know what i am as an artist i know that releasing a 40 minute album would be a waste of time and resources for me it would yeah yeah 12 minute album makes sense um you could just listen to it over and over again uh this album, the whole point of this album was to really like, okay, this is my sound now. I'm going to keep making music like this until I decide to change my sound again. Uh, Live to Die, the whole, like that name comes from this idea of there's no point in living, like there's no point in living afraid to die. It's, there's no point in living in fear, right? You got to just live your life out until you die. That's really it. Yeah, no, I agree with that concept and I actually like your strategy, right? Because I think a lot of underground artists have the wrong idea. Like, oh, I'll drop a 10, 15 song album. You know, that's what I'm supposed to do. But if, if you don't have a, I would say, at least a loyal or big enough fan base yet, it is a lot of waste of resources or maybe other songs that you put on other EPs or just drop as a single and see how it does. Um, Especially, you know, TikTok nowadays, everything's now, now, now. So I think that, perfect strategy for you i think a lot of other other underground artists should use that strategy um i think that's actually great that you know you realize that in the position that you're in um so a lot of people might see this right never heard of you um might they're gonna go you know check you out um by seeing this why should people go listen to your music my music i think it's a good representation of the underground scene right now uh, my music it's not like it replicates the underground scene it takes the underground sound and it adds a little spin to it right like as you hear on backup it's like if you can hear the tags at the beginning of the song it's so different you don't hear that anywhere else right i think that i have a message to put out there and I'm really trying to put it out there with my music. And if you're interested in trying to understand what my message is, listen to my music. And also another thing is like, I use my music as a way to um, like explore emotions, like different emotions. Uh, you see me talk a lot about guns, drugs, all that sort of stuff. And that's, it's not like I'm living that life out. These are emotions, like inside emotions being let out on the song, right? Like. If I'm pissed, I'm going to record a song about it. I'm not going to go act on it. And I think my music also helps people sort of live, like live that way. If you're pissed, listen to one of my songs, you know, don't, if you're sad, listen to one of my songs. Don't go pop pills, tough shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that's obvious and a, a great message. Um, Where do you see your career, let's say a year from today? A year from today? I see me, I'm not going to have unrealistic goals, right? I see me hopefully getting some some shows in, um, hopefully a couple thousand followers, a couple thousand monthly listeners. Um, I really, this is a really weird goal that I've had since I started making music. I want to have a TikTok song. I don't care if it blows up and then I fall off after. I just want to have a TikTok song, you know? Cause oh, you want I like grew... a viral TikTok song? Yeah, yeah. Because I grew up with Musical.ly, right? Like in 2015, yeah. 2016. And then I stayed with TikTok. And it seems like, you know, people who blow up the one song, they get the money out of it. They don't have to sign to a major record deal. And then a lot of people, including me, I don't like the idea of fame, like people knowing what I'm doing and what, like how I'm living every day. So I'm okay with falling off right after the TikTok song. Like if I make a quick <laughs> bag off of it and I influence somebody with one song and I have a couple thousand loyal fans, I'm okay. 
Um, that's that's my goal. Yeah, I think um that's important to realize, right? Um, I think a loyal fan base, even if the number's small, is more important than you know random numbers on a YouTube video. Um, if you get a few thousand people, you know, listen to everything you put out, support you, go see you if you play a show, buy your merch, you can live off that money. Yeah. So I ask everyone this question, no matter how famous the artist, no matter how underground, um, if you could have three dream features from any artist, dead or alive, who would it be? Man, what a question. Um, and not, it doesn't have to be like on one song, just in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaker knockers. Fire, actually. Yeah, speaker knockers. Um, J. Cole. I actually did my English final last year on J. Cole. It's pretty cool. Hope yeah, my English teacher sees this, yeah. It's my... And probably pre anti Semitism Kanye, like before he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love that list. I love that. Um, you mentioned speaker knockers, right? Because, um, he's influenced so many people, like a lot of people, and I don't think he gets enough credit publicly. Yeah. So, um, what's next for you, right? Like, <clears throat> obviously, the album's coming up. Um, what else can fans expect from you? What can people uh, look forward to who find you through this and go check you out? So after this album comes out, I have a really short 50 second song on the way after the album. It was supposed to be released way before. But then I had some problems with the feature. We hashed it out, but it's still not on the song, I don't think. It's a really good song. It's really different. You'll never hear it anywhere else. It doesn't even sound like the album, really. So that's coming on the way. If you want to check it out, uh, the goal from that song is not to get big. I just want to get it out there. And then hopefully after that, I'm going to just keep working on my sound, keep adapting with the current sound. And then we'll see maybe an album, maybe an EP, maybe a couple singles. We'll see. Yeah, um, I really enjoyed your music, bro. Um, I know when I first talked to you, you sent me those three songs. Uh, like I said, 150K is how you know I first heard of you. And then um, the other two obviously were great. Um, let everybody know, uh, before we get out of here, where they can find your music. Um, if you want to just spell out your artist name and give them your social medias and also, um, the mic's yours after that, bro. Yeah. So, uh, you can find my music on all platforms, uh, Spotify, uh, Apple music. It's all the same NBB Glock. And if you want to find my Instagram, it's John underscore Habibi. That's H A B I B I. And then two underscores after that. Um, yeah, and my email is johnbiscalis at gmail.com if any labels want to hit me up, you feel me? If anyone sees this and wants to hit me up for features, anything like that. I charge super cheap, I promise. Uh, yeah, that's that's it, man. Yeah, and uh, any last messages to, you know, your fans, your supporters, or anyone who's going to discover you through this? Um, you know what, man? I don't care if you love my music or not. Okay, that, that came off wrong. I do care if you love my music or not. But if you don't, that's okay. I'll, I'll live my life past it. If you do, I hope you get something out of it, whether it be positive message or even a negative message. I'd rather have a negative message than like- No message. Than no message at all, you know? It's just, it's, it's, it's up to you, man. Do whatever you want with my music. Take it into your life. Let it affect let it affect your life the way you want to. Yeah, yeah just hope at least give it a try it. though. Go check yeah, it out. Yeah, for sure. Check it out. I need those streams. Yeah. Yeah. So um we're definitely looking forward to the album on the 31st, bro. Um we'll obviously uh I'll gladly post it up for you. Um it's been great getting to know you. I know uh you're local to where I am. So yeah. you know, if I get any opportunities in the city or I know sometimes they're looking for artists to open, uh definitely give you a call and um i appreciate you coming on the podcast bro anything i can do for you personally let me know you got thank my you, number man. Um, thank you man you've been supporting me those last couple of days I, I really appreciate you man yeah no doubt bro uh be safe and like i said if you need anything bro contact me sure. or my team will help you out and uh be safe i'm gonna